Boom shakalaka, what is going on everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love and I am joined today by Jacob Tolmasia, the CEO of QB. What's going on? Hey Randall, very, very good having me here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about QB and also your project NAMI. So let's get started. Give us like a brief overview, the elevator pitch. What is it? So NAMI is a scaling protocol, an interoperability protocol for blockchains. So in simple terms, the blockchain technology does not scale. It's not commercially viable today. And what we have done is fix those two problems. So today the product is already available and deployed in the Ethereum mainnet. And we will be porting it to other blockchains, probably starting in October this year. Okay, awesome. So that, I mean, that's a very important thing that you're talking about there because We've seen that with multiple blockchains, how they have issues scaling. So they're slow, it's difficult to get people on board. Anybody who was around uh, back in the beginning of 2018 knows about CryptoKitties on Ethereum and the scaling issues there. So that's a pretty cool problem to address. So we'll get into that in a second, but before we do, I wanna know a little bit about you. Uh, how'd you get into cryptocurrencies? How'd you get into space? All that. Sure. So we started with Huey 12 years ago. It was, uh, we started doing content aggregation. So we could get news from all over the world, aggregate it in a funny way, and then distribute it through, through different partners. We were working with, with some large companies like uh, Telenor, which is a big telco here in Northern Europe, Telefonica, also in LATAM. And we were working with Panasonic, uh, with Mozilla, and Alcatel. So at that time, we were providing service to close to 50 million users a day. Mm -hmm. And um, we had learned a lot about the pain points of the content industry. Then we wanted to look for a tech technology that could help us to leverage that knowledge and fix those problems. We looked into this thing called blockchain. Uh, we learned more about it. And uh, we started building a content marketplace. But then uh, we were relying on third parties to fixing the well-known scalability issues of the blockchain. And then when we realized that those guys were not going to deliver anytime soon, uh, 20 months ago, we, we we went back into the room, back to the whiteboard, and then we started building NAMI. So you can say that NAMI comes out of uh, pure necessity for us. Uh, but of course, the necessity is, is, is for everybody, right? So if you want to build anything on the blockchain, you need that that uh, level of scalability that we have built. And furthermore, the, the, the more we were diving into the work being done by third companies, the, the, then the more we realized that uh, that maybe their angle was was incorrect. Therefore, uh, NAMI became even more important. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So with NAMI, is it something that can solve the scalability issues on Ethereum or how does it work? That's absolutely correct. And, and it already does that. So mm -hmm. we have already deployed it to the Ethereum mainnet about eight months ago. The thing is that we have been really working in stealth mode. So we haven't been part of the big fanfare of, of the crypto world, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yes, it does fix the scalability issues. So you were talking before, for example, about CryptoKitties. So it's very well known what happened. Mm -hmm. and, um, and with NAMI, you can actually fix those problems. So when I said before that most of the other companies working in the space, they're looking only at one element, which is a throughput, our understanding is, is, way, is way wider than that. So throughput is good and it's necessary. You indeed need to go from 12 to potentially thousands of hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. So that is kind of mandatory, mm -hmm. but that is not sufficient. So there are some other problems, like for example, the, the latency of those transactions. So even if you can perform a thousand transactions per second, but you're gonna have high latency, then the count defeats the purpose, right? Um, so latency is something else that we have also addressed the same with the finality of the transactions and also the predictability of the fees right so if i'm going to if i'm going to run a business doing 10,000 transactions a day i need to know prior to starting how how much is going to cost me each transaction so that is the angle that we have taken and uh and that is already built and it's already deployed but back to your question how how we have been able to do it so so now is a layer two solution and i'm sure some of your audience might have already heard about that Mm -hmm. um, but in simple terms, what NAMI is, is a protocol that still uses the Ethereum blockchain in this case, because it's already built for it, as a bastion for decentralization and security. Right? So it is a non-custodial 
uh, protocol. So you deposit money into it and, and you're not giving us anything. You're depositing money into the smart contract. But then what we have is a layer two, which yes, today is centralized and we can dive about it, on that in a second. But then on the layer two is when, is when the magic happens, is where the magic happens. So the high throughput and the latency uh, or lack of latency and, and, and instant finality and transaction fees can mm -hmm. really be best. Okay. Yeah, great. Um, so is this, so you say this has been deployed for like eight months. Who is your target audience for using NAMI and who is using NAMI now? Good question. So um, because of our background coming from mainly corporate, so meaning that we're not just um, a crypto company, um, we have been mainly targeting some of the players that we knew of, right? So we have recently announced that we will be, or that we are working with a company called MBX. MBX is a it's an upcoming uh, cryptocurrency exchange located in Norway uh, that might be well known for being owned by Norwegian.no or the a Norwegian Airlines, which is actually quite large here in Europe and also pretty big in the States. And um, what an NBX is going to be doing together with us and NAMI is building a payment solution. So um, more details will be revealed on the 12th of September. Mm -hmm. Their use case is very well, is very well established, right? And um, at the end of the day, it comes down to uh, Norwegian Airlines are part of an industry that focuses on big volumes and a small margin. Mm -hmm. And today, those margins are being heavily eaten by, by the payment processes like Visa and MasterCard. And with this payment solution, they would like to, to alleviate some of those costs. And then another company that we're working with is Microsoft. And that was announced a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. So when I've mentioned before that MBX will be revealing more details on the 12th, uh, that is because we will have an event in Oslo together with Microsoft and MBX. And then details about our partnership with Microsoft will be revealed. But um, those guys, are, especially Microsoft, of course, because of the footprint they have in the industry, are going to help us greatly to, to hopefully get the kind of market share that we're after. Right? But equally important for us is to target the, the crypto community. Right? And as mentioned before, the fact we have been in stealth mode the last 20 months doesn't really help us much to, to be known. Um, but uh, we feel that we have been doing many things right. And now that we're coming out of stealth mode, hopefully some of the main actors in the crypto community will, will lay their eyes on us and we'll see what we have done and, and hopefully we can, we can get to work together. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I mean, those are some, those are some really good questions. And uh, I mean, Norwegian Airlines is one of my favorites to fly because they have like really nice planes. They have the lighting, like the, the mood lighting inside. And then they also... Um, change the atmosphere so you don't get the jet lag afterwards. It's so awesome. <laughs> they are actually pretty good. I, I've, I've, I have, of course, I'm a big fan and, 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 and customer of Norwegian. I've, I've used them for for a long time. I mean, I've lived in Norway the last 15 years and, and I've been using them regularly every year. Um, but as you said, you know, they work in a, in a very, in a very cumbersome, um, in a very complex industry, right? Mm -hmm. And they have big competitors in terms of low budget airlines like EasyJet and Ryanair here in Europe. But mm -hmm. still, they managed to, to get prices for being the best one. And uh, yeah. They and, and I, would so much, I would so much prefer to pay twice as much to fly on the Norwegian than to pay for like Ryanair or any of those. You know? Absolutely. And I think that goes for everybody. I think that goes for everybody, yeah. That's very cool. So I'm curious, how does NAMI compare with other scaling solutions? Are there other scaling solutions on Ethereum or is it just on other blockchains and how do you compare? So you do have some, some actors working on scalability. Yeah. Um, you do have some solutions that are being developed right now. Um, I would say that the main difference for us uh, would be the fact that our approach towards the scalability is not only throughput. So as mentioned before, some of the other competitors that we have, they, they might have solved the throughput problem, uh, but then um, they seem to fail at solving the, the finality, the latency, and the fee predictability. So which again, that kind of shocked us when we really comprehended what were their flaws, right? And then the other big difference between us and, and the competitors is that our solution is pretty much generalized. 
So we have architected it in a way that we can easily port it to other blockchains that support smart contracts. Right? Mm -hmm. So I would say that those are the two main uh, unique selling points that we have in terms of the in terms of our competitors. Mm, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I think we all saw last year, like the throughput wars where everybody was saying, oh, we're 100 TPS. Oh, we're 1,000 TPS. We're 100,000 TPS. Yeah. It, I, you're one of the first people I've heard talk about how there's a lot more than just the throughput that matters. Yes, it is. And, um, and maybe the fact that, that our team, you know, we're not that young anymore. So, so some of us have been around engineering for about 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually quite a bit of us come from the oil and gas industry mm -hmm. where, where you build utterly complex uh, systems. So if you think about I don't know, oil and gas simulators uh, for reservoirs or anything like that, um, you know, you have to carefully think and have a holistic understanding of the problem you're solving. Right? Mm -hmm. and so we have been able to, to leverage the experience that we bring in. And, um, and we immediately comprehended that, yeah, throughput is good, it's kind of important, but if you can do a thousand transactions per second, but, but you have a latency of 15 seconds, that is just pointless. Mm -hmm. So um, we humbly believe that we have been able to you know, leverage those 20 odd years of experience that we have, most of us, building code. And plus, of course, we also have some of, you know, some of the best minds in the, in the industry working with us. So uh, our CEO has been working around scalability since 2013, first with Bitcoin, mm. and uh, most recently has been, has been also involved in some of the other projects uh, around Ethereum. So uh, he, he cannot help us to comprehend how obtuse some of the mentalities, how they're working on scalability where, right? Um, yeah, I hope, I, hope, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely, that's awesome. Uh, so you guys are having an IEO for your token sale. Um, are. What, why are you doing that and kind of what do you hope to, to use that for to gain from that? Absolutely. So we do have an IEO coming up now in September with Liquid, the exchange in, in, in Japan. We went through a couple of months due diligence with them. They're pretty solid people. Uh, we like them and I think they like us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're trying to achieve is, is, is a few things. First of all is to get visibility. As, as mentioned before, having worked on st uh, stealth mode for a long time doesn't really help us. And you probably know better than us how this industry is built, right? Hype, hype, hype. <laughs> we are kind of allergic to that. Mm -hmm. um, but that the upcoming to token uh, token sale will will most definitely help us. Second, uh, which is even more important, the um, the token plays a key role in the security of the protocol. So as mentioned before, although the layer two today is centralized and we have a pre pretty clear path towards decentralization of that, of that layer two. Um, and we are the sole operator today, although MBX will soon become a second operator of the exchange. The, um, the, pro the protocol is still trustless. So if somebody detects fraud, they will be able to go on chain to an Oracle and they will be able to stake these tokens. And uh, if they can actually prove that fraud has been committed, the protocol will come to halt. Mm -hmm. So what we need with the token sale is to have as much distribution as possible uh, with these tokens. And we already tried for eight months. So we were running monthly airdrops, but uh, um, you know we have a very small community and, and they realized that uh, it was too good to, you know, they rather prefer you know, keeping kind of low profile. So these token sale will, will definitely help us not only to get hopefully a footprint in the industry, but also to get a big token distribution. Okay, awesome. Uh, and so I'm curious, what is your favorite thing or what do you think is the coolest thing about your project? That's a superb question. Um, and uh, the same way as we take a, a more holistic approach towards fixing the scalability, I think the best we bring in is again, is a, um, is a compound interest of all the things we have done, right? So not only fix the scalability from a wider set of angles, but also the portability of the protocol. So um, most, most people you know, fail to understand as well when you analyze other, other scalability solutions that uh, 
it is great that you fix throughput and it's great that you have developed for Ethereum, but, uh, but that's it, right? So you should be looking at bridging these phenomenally large blockchains with a big footprint, like for example, NEO in China or Bitcoin being the biggest store of value or Ethereum having the largest developer community. So um, the fact that we have solved that problem and the fact that we already have got some pretty powerful partnerships in place to, again, obtain a decent market share over the next few months and couple of years. Plus the fact that we have also developed some pretty good developer tools like SDKs and CLI and APIs. All that together, I think, is what gives us, gives us uh, kind of an edge. And of course, some people will complain that we don't have, that we don't play the, the hype game, but uh, some other people will see that the fact that we have been keeping silence, developing code and delivering is, is a bigger asset. So we would like to think that way, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. It's, it's a much better, much better thing to actually, it's like the, the big hat, no cattle thing. They say that about guys in Texas, how they have a big hat and no cattle. You have a bunch of cattle and you haven't been talking about it, but it's coming. And yes. uh, I mean, you mentioned like developing the SDKs and those are really important because then you can get developers out there working on your platform and, uh, really helping create more of it. Um, so one thing, one thing that I'm curious about that you just mentioned. So uh, we were talking about scalability, and you mentioned porting to different blockchains. You also dropped in interoperability. So is this something that can actually compete with other interoperability projects out there? Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, um, but again. Uh, uh, we, or at least I personally believe that speaking only about throughput or scalability from a throughput point of view or interoperability for the sake of it, it is, it is, it is a, uh, you're leaving a lot of things on the table, right? So um, interoperability for the sake of it isn't, isn't sufficient. So you need to think about it of uh, what is the business case? What is in it for those wanting to, you know, use interoperability protocol? So one of them is, is the flowing in capital. So you have all this money in Bitcoin, all this money in Neo, all this money in Ethereum. And if you have a seamless interface, so if I could send you right now X number of Bitcoins and you could receive immediately X number of ETH, well, that would be fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. So um, why would you have, to, or why would I have to go to an exchange, you know, do an exchange rate as or is sell my Bitcoins and pay so much, then withdraw, then go back to Ethereum and then send you... That is painless. Uh, it was super painful. So the idea is just to make it as, as painless and, and transparent as possible. But yet at the same time, you need to comprehend what are the best use cases, right? So uh, atomic swaps right now uh, would be the perfect use case. So if you could easily sell your, your Bitcoin and get immediately Ethereum, pay little tiny fees, have uh, zero block confirmations and blah, 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 that would be, that would be brilliant. So, um, yeah, we're indeed competing with, with those protocols. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So we've talked a lot. Um, anything else that we didn't mention that you think people should know about? Um, no, well, um, I would stress the point that, that the product is already available. So um, we, we're not coming up with empty future promises, but the product is there. And of course, if any of your of your of your audience is going to be in Oslo on the twelfth of September, they should most definitely come to the event. Uh, I can share with you later on the sign up for the event at Microsoft. Great, great. Anyone who wants to find out more information about Hubie and Nami, how can they go about? How is the best way to go ahead doing that? I would say go to the Nami.io website. It's n a h m i i dot i o. Um, it's a very simple website, a uh, single page, but of course you can have access to the white paper and, um, and read what are the main unique selling points. You can also have a quick look at the roadmap. Uh, half of it is already built, so it's more about what is coming next. And, uh, and also you could go to medium.com medium slash Hubie to read our, our blog. Uh, and uh, over there as well, we keep people pretty much informed. And of course, join as well our Telegram. Very cool. Very cool. I can provide you with the links if you want to add them to the video. Yeah, I'll put them down in the description of the video. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jacob. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The pleasure was mine.